Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's your boy EQ Philly, man. Listen, man, fourth episode. Welcome to the American Philly Film Podcast. Yes, and today, you know, I had to think about this because at the end of the day, sometimes, you know, we as guerrilla shooters, you know, we the director, we the... the stage uh, crew, we 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 everything when we on the set, and so sometimes you can get mixed up, man, because you, you know you in charge of everything. You are, and so I came up with this post because I felt as though sometimes you need to know your place, but you also need to know your energy. You feel me? And this one is called "Don't Be the Asshole Director," <laughs> right? You know what I mean? Don't be the asshole director. Don't be the one everybody looks at and be like, man, I don't want to work with that boy. He's an asshole. Feel me? <laughs> so, I'm going to jump right into it. This is what we're going to do. We're just going to jump right into this, and we're going to talk about the main thing about not being the asshole director. It's all based on communication. All hell okay? freeze. Now, when you want to set... You're going to have a lot of people coming at you, asking you different things, just because you're the one in charge on the set. You might not have the budget for, uh, you know, stage crew, you know, assistant director, you know, different people uh, who can help with the clothing and, 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 and all kinds of things that you need on the set. You know, you, you the guy that they're looking for. You feel me? And so if you're acting like an asshole, people ain't going to want to work with you. You got to remember, some of these people are working for you for free, you know, because they believe in the vision. So you have to have the attitude of a leader and you have to be able to do one thing. And that is communicate. Okay, explain what you're looking for. You know, when you explain what you're looking for, people tend to like gravitate to that. Okay. And when you're explaining, you have to have an attitude, a positive attitude, you know, something inspiring because at the end of the day, they don't know what you're looking for. They have no clue, especially if they've never been on the set before, especially if they never delve or dove into acting before. So if you don't explain what you're looking for, how do you expect them to know what to do? You feel me? Yeah, I do that. Okay. So after you explain what you're looking for, never settle for the first thing you shoot. Okay? Because once you explain what you're looking for, you know, they're just getting warm with it. You feel me? And as they're getting warm with it, they not totally there yet. They not they didn't totally grasp the whole thing yet. And so sometimes you might have to allow them to shoot again. Okay? So don't be the asshole to be like, nah, this is this ain't done right. And you know, don't don't get the attitude of, you know, aggression when people are just learning how to really get into the vibe of acting and really getting your vision to the forefront. So don't have a negative attitude, you know what I'm saying? And don't settle for the first thing you shoot. Allow them to get warm, shoot it a few times, and once they really get into the vibe, you'll know. The energy will be there, and that's when you will get that perfect shot, which we talked about in the previous podcast, uh, getting that perfect shot. But it also just depends on how well you communicate with your crew that you get that perfect shot. You know, and because it's going to be people on your crew that can assist you and you have to be able to be open enough to allow them to assist you. Now, you might get the final word on the vision, 
but allow them to give you some input. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes that in, some they see things that you may have missed. Don't be that asshole director, man, that don't want to listen to what is going on on the scene because they're going to walk away from you and they're not going to want to work with you anymore. You know, I believe that the people that I have been working with over the years have been consistent with me because I've learned not to be that asshole director. I do listen to opinions. And even if I get the final word, they understand why I did it because I gave them a good enough reason for why I did it. And and if they give me positive input that I can use, I use it to my advantage. I never want to be that asshole director to where when you go on a set, you can't tell them nothing. Of course, you know the director has the final word. But if that director has a mindset of positivity, he'll be able to consume that, especially as a guerrilla shooter, man. Like I said before, you don't have the luxury of a full staff. So they're looking for you for direction, and you have to be able to communicate that very well. The third thing we want to talk about is speaking with authority and kindness. Hmm. How do you speak with authority and have kindness? Well, it has to be in your spirit, first of all. You know, you can ask someone to do something, and if you ask them right, they will do it. It's just that simple. Sometimes we make things more complicated than it needs to be. If you ask someone to do something in the right tone and in the right manner, they will do it. And if you ask them nice enough, they'll do it with passion. You feel me? You don't want to go on the set and say, I need you to stand over here and I need you. Yeah, you, you move, move over here. No, no, no. It'd be nice if you know their names, you know. Hey, Black, could you uh, uh, stand on this side for me? And and, and 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 sister, can you stand on this side for me? And as you're moving, uh, could you make sure that uh, you move with flair? You know, get into the groove of it. You know, and as you start, begin to talk to people on that note and that energy and that vibe, they get to feel more comfortable with you and themselves because you got to remember this is their first time, some of them, and you want them to feel comfortable. So when they on set and they get into their little vibe, they're making your vision come to fruition. That's what you want. Don't be the asshole director that doesn't allow people to get open enough to pursue their dreams as well as fulfill your dream and getting your vision out with your film. Okay. Another thing you want to talk about, we want to talk about is <clears throat> listen to opinions. Like I said before, there's many people that's going to be on your set that may see something that you don't see. And when you don't see it and they see it, they're willing to talk up and say, hey, you know what? What about if we did this? And what about if we did that? And you got to be the one to say, OK, let's try it. Not the one that says, no, I know what it is. I know what it's supposed to be. This is my vision. I, I, I'm trying to hear what, what y'all saying. Shut up. No. No, 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 no. You can't talk to people like that because you won't get anything accomplished. You feel me? You got to be the one to say, OK, let's try because you never know. You might try the idea that they gave and and the movie comes out even better because they gave it. And then they're going to feel more confident being on the set. Okay, and so it's okay if somebody gives you opinion. Like I said, you are the director as the guerrilla shooter and you have the final say. If you don't like the idea, you don't use it. But at least give it a try to see if it may work, because when you're on a scene and you're doing it all by yourself, it's like I said, there's things that you don't see that other people do see. So be that one that has an open mind. Don't be the one that's closed up and doesn't really have, you know, an idea of what's going on because you're you want to be the boss. A lot of chiefs and not enough Indians. You got to learn how to be a chief and the Indian. You feel what I'm saying? As a guerrilla shooter. Yeah. You got to be the chief and the Indian because, you know, you can get on the set and talk to the wrong person the wrong way. Shots fired. You know what I'm saying? And, and, you know, at the end of the day, anything can go down. I've, I've seen some things and heard some things about being on the set and the director is not uh, savvy enough to be positive or, or influential. 
and, you know, guns get pulled out. You know what I'm saying? Things can happen on the set, especially as a guerrilla shooter, because you're not on the set with a whole crew of cast members. I mean, well, not cast members, a whole crew of, uh, of people that can assist. So you out there by yourself. And anything's possible. So you can't be the asshole director that gets caught out on the limb and ain't got yourself protected. And you out there talking to people like they not human beings, you know, hurting people feelings or whatever the case may be. You can get shot. You know, you can get hurt very bad. You know what I'm saying? Or you can, you know, anything's possible. Anything is possible. You feel me? So you want to be able to communicate to your crew. Actors, actresses, extras, whoever, what is the vision of the day? And if they give you input along the way, you have to be the one that says, okay, let's try it. And if it doesn't work, we're going to go back to the original uh, situation. And then when you try it and it does work, congratulate them and thank them for seeing something that you did not see. Because that is going to make the difference between the energy in your film and the people that you're working with and what kind of love they're going to bring to the table. Like I said, sometimes you're working with people that are doing it for free. They're not getting paid for their service, but they want to be in the film and they want to help you see the vision come true to fruition. So you have to be able to talk to them in such a way that they happy to work with you. And then they're going to recommend to other people. This is how you get around. That's how your name get around. That's how the buzz get around. Oh, working with this such and such. It was the dopest experience ever. Da, 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 da. You know, and that's still word of mouth. I know we got social media right now and everybody's listening to the podcast and, you know, and, and, and checking out the social media and different things like that. But word of mouth still travels. It's still on the street that, you know, you either a good dude to work with or a good sister to work with or you a bad person to work with. You feel me? So you want to be able to communicate Across the board, everything that you want to see. That's why you have to plan ahead of time what you want to see so that you'll be able to tell them exclusively exactly what you want to see. You feel me? And, you know, back to the subject of leaving yourself out on the limb, you know, violence can occur if you talk to people negative or you be that asshole director that should not be talking the way you talk to people. And speaking of that, okay, speaking of that point, today I got another exclusive for you. Yes, yes. Uh, there was this hip-hop group back in the day called uh, Poor Righteous Teachers, and, they, you know, they had some positive uh, influence on hip-hop, you know, number one songs and all of that. And um, I got a chance to talk to wise intelligent yes wise intelligent of poor righteous teachers and what he did for me was break down you know how we can at least not stop but you know conquer and 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 and, and heal the violence in the community uh, how artists can do it and, and how the community, can, the community can do it as well. And so he broke it down. And you know what I want to do? I want to get that to you guys. I want to get that to you guys fully. But if you want to watch the whole interview, you can go to www.illadelstyles.net slash interviews. www.illadelstyles.net slash interviews. Exactly. Yes. Illidale Styles is the brand name. When you go there, you can watch exclusive interviews, physical interviews, you know, with the people, the real people there. And um, also, not only can you watch interviews and different things like that, you can buy apparel there. Yes, you can buy apparel there. You know, we got live shirts. You know, we got the drip wear by Demetrius. Um, my brother who passed away, who got killed on the streets of Philadelphia by... His friend uh, left behind a daughter, and his daughter's 28 now, and she uh, is into, you know, um, nursing, and she's doing very, very well. And so I decided that I wanted to leave her something behind, and I, I made my brother's clothing line um, in his name uh, for the possibility to grow it and 
to be able to leave her something behind if I pass away. You feel what I'm saying to you? So at the end of the day, we got the drip clothing line by Demetrius. Um, Also, we got some Corona shirts. I survived the Corona uh, T-shirts, mugs, blankets, canvases, uh, bags, uh, towels, rugs, the whole gambit. You feel what I'm saying to you? It's all at illadelstyles.net. You feel me? And um, you can buy the apparel. And also, for those who love this program, have been listening to all the tidbits of being a great underground guerrilla shooter and still get the presence of uh, a professional, uh, you can donate. There's a donate button at illadelstyles.net where you can donate and, and continue to support not only the podcast, but the brand itself. Um, we are 19 years in the making. Uh, in February of 2021, we will be 20 years old. Um, Illidale Styles has been around in the streets, in the community, uh, in the region. You know what I mean? And now we um, national and global. You know what I mean? Going state to state with the films, um, winning awards. Shout out to the Los Angeles Motion Picture Film Festival and the Philadelphia Independent Film Festival uh, uh, Awards for uh, Festival Awards for giving me an opportunity with my latest film, Heartless, uh, to be heard and seen. And uh, you can also watch that movie there at illadelstyles.net. You can watch uh, Change the Beat, uh, American Bully, which was also... An exclusive interview done from Fox 29 News with my girl, Joyce Evans. Yeah, Joyce Evans from Fox 29 News gave us. We were the first official independent film uh, to get a three minute spread on the daily news in our city. And and that's love. You know what I'm saying to you? So you can go watch the movies. You can buy apparel uh, and you can get more information on what we're doing. And and you can come and check out my affiliates as well as some artists that I'm producing right now. Shout out to my man, Kerry D. Singleton. He's my new poetry artist who has a new album coming out that I produced. And it's coming out on our label, Illidale Styles Recordings. And trust me, when you hear this, it's going to be dope. The sound is dope. A lot of people in New York is already vibing off of it. Shout out to New York, man. I mean, they've been giving me love for years. Shout out to my man Buster Rhymes with his new album that's out right now. Whew. Dangerous, man. There's a lot of stuff going on in the city. With I mean, in the, in the world right now with the COVID-19 and all kinds of crazy stuff. But there's still people excelling. And so today, without further ado, I'm going to give you an exclusive interview with my man, Wise Intelligent, from Poor Righteous Teachers. So I want you to tune in. Thanks for listening to the American Philly Film Gorilla Podcast. And I will see you on the other side. We're here with my man. Yo, tell the people your name. Tell them everything. About them. Wise, intelligent, poor, righteous teachers and all of them things. You know what I mean? Take you back a couple legions. You know what I mean? That's how we do it. You know what I mean, we representing right now for the uh, Party for Peace. It's all good. So how do you feel artists can contribute to stop the violence in the community? Oh, my goodness. You got to get out there. You got to get in the community. You know what I mean? You got to build with the youth because they respect the artists. You know what I mean? They listen to the artists more than they do their teachers, their parents even. You know what I mean? The artists right now is the number one influence on the youth. So we, we definitely in their heads already. So we just need to come back to the community. You know what I mean? And I think that each artist should try and set up some type of program to give back to the youth. You know what I mean? It's very important that we do that. Yo, that was that was a good piece. Um, we also want to know how do you think uh, the community itself, without the artists, just uh, come together and unite to make this happen? Wow. You know, I think it's going to take some serious cooperative economics, you know what I mean, and some political orientation on a grassroots level. You know, because right now the youth are wilding out right now. They don't have no political orientation. They don't have no direction. You know, they have the wrong leads on their anger. You know what I mean? They just need somebody to come and refocus their anger, redirect that energy into something positive, you know. It's, just, it's going to take the youth, you know what I mean? And there's never been a revolution or, um, or a movement, successful movement in the world without the youth involved. The youth are the ones who ignite the movements, man. You know what I mean? So we got to get to the youth and, and give them some type of political orientation and let them know exactly what's causing them to be in the predicament that they're in, you know what I mean? All they know is they're in, predic- in a predicament, 
and they trying to shoot their way out of it. So we need somebody that can get get with the youth, come down to their level, and show them what put them in this situation, and that they're in a situation. They don't even know what caused it. So we just need to get to the root of the problem. You know what I mean? Nobody's doing it. Everybody's dancing around it. So once that happens, I think we can move forward. Hey, yo, this is Wise Intelligent. This is Illadel Styles DVD. You checking. Do the knowledge. You know what I mean? Wise enough. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, you just listening to, you just listened to <laughs> the exclusive interview with my man, Wise Intelligence for Poor Righteous Teachers. And you can watch the full interview at www.illadelstyles.net slash interviews. And you can see so many more exclusive interviews that we have. Um, and also you can buy some apparel. And like I said, you can donate. Hit that donate button. And continue to support the show. 19 years in the business. 20 more, twenty years coming up in February of 2021. And we're going to definitely continue to be bringing you good vibes, positive affirmations. And oh yeah, my positive affirmation for you today is. Be the one that everybody look to. Be the one that everybody gravitate to. Be the one that everybody can depend on. But also be the one that God shows favor to because of your positive energy, love, and peace that you bring to others. That is my positive affirmation for you today. Okay? Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate the love. Continue to support. Coming up with episode five. Oh, it's going to be crazy, boy. Listen, it's going to be crazy. All right? So... Continue to check out the podcast. Thank you for tuning in. The American Philly Film Podcast. And we will see you on the other side.